Hello, and welcome, and I'm sorry. I know I have a million other games that I started and haven't finished, and I have no business starting another game, but I was recently talking to a friend about the original Legend of Zelda. Uh, they went back and completed it, and it made me want to give it another try. I had this game for my Nintendo Entertainment System as a, a young child, and I never finished it on my own. Uh, I only managed to finish it with help from friends and family. And I thought I would have another go at it. Uh, this isn't like, uh, I mean, I've watched playthroughs of the game since then, and there are things that I know, things that I remember, probably more things that I half remember, which should be fun. But I'm going to try really hard to finish the game as if I was playing it when it was first released. Um, so I have a PDF of the manual here, hopefully provided by Nintendo on their website. And I actually printed out a physical copy of the overworld map, which I'm going to use for taking notes. Because the original cartridge came with a really nice map with a lot of really useful information on it. Such as the location of the first four dungeons and points of interest and... Uh, like landmarks that the game refers to like lost woods where's that you know <clears throat> if you have the map you know and there's a lot of useful information in the manual too so i consider that you know fair game to use to help me finish and i'm not going to stick to that you know religiously or anything if i have to use a walkthrough or something i will but I'm, I'm going to try to do this with the, the knowledge and tools available to me. See, it even says right there, please look up the manual for details. The manual is important, as it was with many NES games. Not every NES game. For some, with some NES games, the manual was com completely useless. But this was one of those where the manual was pretty much essential. And I'm sure people have beaten this game completely blind without the map or manual and more power to them, but I'm here to have fun. I'm here to register my name. My name is Zelda. No, it's not. Of course, if I put in Zelda as my name, as everyone knows, uh, the manual and the map would be completely useless because it would launch me into the second quest, which you are unceremoniously thrust into after finishing the game, which I've never even touched the second quest. If I can finish this game, I might consider it, consider trying it at least. Like, I don't think I've ever even seen a playthrough of the second quest. So, so that would be like a thousand percent more blind than this playthrough. I don't know. Might be interesting. All right. So first things first, we want to head north to get to the first dungeon. Oh, first things first, we got to get our sword. Like, I don't even know if you get the sword right away in, in the second quest at all. You might have to go hunting for it. Who knows? It is a total mystery. I don't remember, like, I did eventually see the ending of The Legend of Zelda. I wasn't the one who beat the final boss. And I was, you know, not the one playing for the majority of the playthrough. But I did see the end of the game, which means I would have seen the message that says, now do, a, now do another quest. And I wonder how seven or eight or how, however old I was, year old me, 
would have responded to that. Like, I don't remember even looking at it, which is weird. And I, I learned years later that you can get to the second quest by putting Zelda in as your name. And I had completely forgotten that you can also do the second quest by finishing the game. It uh, brings out that message and it implores you to begin a new quest. Which, you know, I would have been familiar with the concept because I had finished Super Mario Brothers. And when you do that, you can start, start a second playthrough where all of the enemies are Buzzy Beetles. So I definitely would have remembered... Or I would have been familiar with the concept of like a new game plus or a second quest. I, I think this game was just so difficult that like I must have like ignored it. Like I was done. I'd seen the end of Zelda. Or I don't know, maybe we turned the console off before we got that message. Who knows? I don't know. It might be fun to just see how far I can get. I mean, that's kind of the idea behind randomizers and stuff. Just take all of the, the same elements of the game and just rearrange them, shuffle them around. This is like an official Nintendo sanctioned ROM hack. I mean, not a randomizer because everything was placed intentionally, but it's a, you know, kind of gives you the same thing that randomizers are popular for, you know, experience the same game in a, in a new way. And I think it might be fun to eventually try the Legend of Zelda randomizer. And I want to eventually stream or record Link to the Past, which is still, I think, my favorite Zelda game and one of the only ones that I finished without help. And, I mean, that game, of course, has one of the best randomizers, one of the most popular randomizers, and I think that might be an exercise. I would have to refresh my memory, because it's been a while with that game. I'm not expecting to do well. Like, the first dungeon is basically a tutorial. And I have revisited this game through, like, emulation and Zelda Classic, and when this game was re-released on the Game Boy Advance, I played it there. Uh, I never got very far, but, you know, the first couple dun dungeons I've been through a few times, so I still have pretty... pretty good knowledge of those. Oh, good. Bringing up the menu pauses the beeping. I thought about getting a ROM hack that re removes the beeping, but eh. Like, it's not as intrusive in the original game as I remembered. Like, it's annoying, but it kind of blends into the background music more than I remembered it doing. I think the beeping is more annoying in Link to the Past. Uh, okay. Well, North Northeast Peninsula is the secret. By the way, this dungeon is supposed to be an eagle. Uh, if you look at the layout... All of the dungeons are vaguely shaped like some sort of uh, animal or uh, mystical symbol. And I can sort of see it. It would look more like an eagle if the, the eagle's right wing was extended all the way. Uh, as, as far as its, as its left wing. Yeah, assuming the eagle was facing us. Uh, as it is, it looks sort of like a goofy face looking left. 
or maybe like a helicopter. Um, but I can see the resemblance to an eagle as well. The dreaded skeleton monster. Uh, Stalfos? I know some stuff about Zelda stuff. Yeah, like I said, I'm not expecting to do well because the action of this game doesn't feel particularly good to me. Uh, it's it's playable. I mean, it's much more playable than contemporary action adventure games of the type. And I think this holds up better than most of its imitators. Uh, I think during the Guardian Legend playthrough, at some point I mentioned that I think Guardian Legend is a better action adventure game than The Legend of Zelda. Which isn't really a, a fair comparison because Guardian Legend came out, you know, years later. It learned a lot of lessons from The Legend of Zelda. Um, but based on my memory of this game, that's that's how I feel about the game overall. And I'm interested to see if I still feel that way after replaying this game. Uh, I don't know, like, I feel like you just move so slowly in this game and you never get faster. And it's really the slow movement that is the thing I have the hardest time with because the enemies are generally much faster than you and dodging can be tricky uh, when they move in haphazard directions. Uh, okay, so Northeast Peninsula is the secret, so... Which, you know, we confirmed by getting the compass, which is showing the red blinking dot in the Northeast Peninsula, showing us that that is where the Triforce is located. So we will hit the Northwest Peninsula, or maybe just the North Peninsula. Doesn't really go that far west. If the, the eagle's wing was fully extended, then it would be... Oh wait, this is its head, never mind. Yeah, that would just be the North Peninsula. Ooh. I didn't know you, you could get the bomb before the boomerang. Hmm. Huh. I thought bombs didn't start dropping until after you got the first piece of Triforce. Alright. <clears throat> I know it's one of these blocks. By the way, if you're the kind of person who gets frustrated watching people trying to solve puzzles or trying to figure out stuff that you no, if you're a Legend of Zelda expert, you might not want to watch this video, a series of videos. Because I'm going to be trying stuff. Like, I know where some of these secrets are located that you have to bomb for. Or I think I know. Um, and there are several that I don't know. So I'm going to be trying a lot of random stuff. So if it frustrates you, for example, if I put a bomb on this wall and see if there's anything there. You've played Zelda. You know there's nothing there. How ridiculous to even consider that there might be something there. Then you might want to find something different to watch. Just a heads up. Because this might be frustrating for you. Also, me checking my map every five seconds. Alright, so we should be getting the wooden boomerang here pretty soon. Ow. Dang, that did a whole heart of damage. Wooden boomerang's rough. Uh, secret door here. No. 
I doubt there's going to be any secret doors in the first dungeon. Ooh, all masters. Creepy. When I was a kid, I thought that this noise that you hear is the wall masters. Like, I thought that's the noise that they make. Uh, but that's the, the noise of the boss, which uh, always is audible uh, two rooms before you actually fight the boss. I'm going to be using bombs and stuff pretty liberally because uh, you can always get more. The maximum number is eight. And there's no point walking around with an inventory full of bombs that I'm not using. So, uh, it is suboptimal. But that's how I roll. Glad I have full health for this boss. Uh, they, they put the heart container uh, in the path to that, the next room to force you to get it. That's good design. <clears throat> Force you to find out what it is. What it does. That, that flashing is rough. Uh, I guess that was part of a lot of Nintendo games, though. Alright. Well, we are one eighth of the way there. Excellent. Also, it's weird that. The first item you find in a dungeon is the bow. Something that you can't use, but you buy the arrow. Maybe that's to teach you that not every item you find will immediately be useful. And I guess it does give you the boomerang in the first dungeon, so you, you do get a useful item. That's probably good design. Zola's spitting an infinite amount of fireballs. I don't think you can reasonably defeat them until you get the better sword. I don't think it's possible because their health regenerates every time they disappear and reappear. I don't think it's possible to do enough damage until you have the quote unquote white sword. Alright, so let me consult my map here real quick. Uh, and see where I have to go for level 2. Alright, I'm here. So if I go right, and then up, and then up, there's a lake that I know to be a fairy fountain. Uh, and then I can go right from there, and there's a cave, which must be a shop. So uh, I'm going to do that real quick. <clears throat> See how useful the map is? Of course, I mean, you wouldn't know it's a fairy fountain until you go there. Oh, well, never mind. Not necessary. Also, there's a big old question mark on the map on this on this screen, which I think is indicating... Uh, I think the question marks are the fast travel points, because uh, there's this single rock here, and I can't push it up because I don't have the power bracelet, but... Once I do, then I can start uh, unlocking all the fast travel points. Thanks, Fairy. You don't want to come with me on my adventure? I don't blame you. Alright, so... I like how you can pause and breathe on these screens. The enemies don't just infinitely respawn. Once you clear a screen, you can... Uh, Kinda chill for a few minutes. Okay, so I wanna go right. And that is this cave. See what they sell. I don't think I can buy much yet. Also, uh, a hint on the map. Um, th there's a section of the map that shows the enemies that you'll find <clears throat> in uh, different parts of the world, and uh, a hint indicates that blue enemies are more likely to, to drop bombs, which I think I knew that at one point, but I had forgotten. 
Oh, three more rupees to get arrows. I would like to get bombs too. All right, yeah, the the big shield. I remember being pretty expensive. Is this the one where the? Oh, oh, well, I guess I bought bombs. Can I buy more bombs? Good. So twenty rupees for four. The maximum number is eight. No, oh, the uh, the fires don't start spitting fireballs at you if you attack the the shopkeeper. I forget which game it was that did that, or maybe it's this game. It's just not the shopkeepers. Uh, I think four bombs is enough for now. I don't need to do a whole lot of bombing just yet. All right, so I want to go right and then. Down. I should probably start saying cardinal directions because it sounds more adventure -y. So I need to go east and then south and then work my way through this uh, this foresty maze. Tink. Tink. That's a pretty satisfying sound. Not all the sound effects are just so satisfying. And like the little graphical effect when you defeat an enemy. Mwah. Perfect. That part of the game feels really, really good. Like for an NES game especially. Really just the, the movement speed <clears throat> that I kind of have a beef with. And the tendency to sort of nudge you onto... Like, if you're facing a direction <clears throat> and, and you turn, it has a tendency to nudge you a few pixels if you're not exactly lined up with, with the grid, which... I mean, it's a, it's a real clever programming thing. <clears throat> and, uh... Like, it's, it's a better solution than a lot of stuff, but it can... end up... Uh, positioning me not exactly how I'd like to be positioned. Anyway. Okay, right, right, up, and then left. Also, the map that came with the game is not completely filled in. Uh, it's sort of filled in in like a, a pyramid type of shape. Hey, look at that. Saved myself 20 rupees. Um, and uh, so it's 8x8. Eight eight, and I don't think the whole overworld... Like, I, I don't think it uses all 64 of those spaces, but it, it uses more spaces than are filled in on the in the manual. The manual map. Which isn't a map that I draw manually. It's the map that came with the manual. It does recommend drawing a map for the dungeons, which, I don't know, I don't think it's necessary, like the auto map is pretty, pretty good. It doesn't show, like, where the secret passages are. Well, I guess in some of the, some of the later dungeons, there are probably more complex secret passages. And it might help to draw a map just to know how to navigate between those. Yeah, you know, so far the only secret passage we've seen, uh, by, by which I mean a staircase that, that leads somewhere else, is to the uh, the room that has the the dungeon item. Trying to, trying to figure out where I am. I should probably look at the PDF, unless I actually need to make a note. Uh, okay. So, I think if I go left... Oh wait, I can't go left. Um... This might be one of the screens... Oh wait! Oh, okay, I see where I am. Alright, so there's there's a question mark here, which 
I know there, there can be passages under these statues. Oops. Okay, but that's not going to be a fast travel point, is it? I think the fast travel points are all rocks that you have to push. Uh oh. Ooh, well thank you very much, map. I mean, I would have woken those statues up anyway, but uh, it's nice of them to give me a hand. And I'm actually going to draw a dollar sign on my map, so uh, I know that I already got this. Well, no, because I should use a dollar, dollar sign for the shop. Hmm. Maybe that could be a dollar sign in a circle. Okay, that's just so I don't look in the map later, see the question mark, and be like, oh, have I checked that? Because now I know that I have. Okay, and the enemies don't respawn when you come back up, which is nice. Right, so I'm actually on the wrong path to get to level 2, but that's okay. Let's head over to the east here. Oh, another one. And by another one, I mean another set of two living statues. Crud. Be using my boomerang more. That's another goal I have for this playthrough, is to use the tools that are provided to me more. I think on... on some of my attempts at revisiting this game, I kind of forget that I have them. And they're useful. Also, I do remember that you don't want to approach these statues from the bottom, because they'll damage you, and like, immediately... or they'll wake up and immediately hit you. See if I can stun this guy before he even moves. Nice. Another secret to everybody. Ten. Aw. Alright, let's go ahead and mark this one too. I don't know why the mob ones are giving me giving me money. I'm not sure what their motivation is there. Trying to bribe me not to kill them, but you know. They're still aggressive towards me. Alright, so I want to go west and then south and then east. There's another cave there, which I think is another item shop. Which, if they sell, if they sell arrows, I have enough to buy those now. I don't have enough to buy the big shield. Uh, if they don't sell arrows, I might backtrack to the other shop and get some arrows there. This is, uh, that's what I mean by using the tools that they give me. Because if the blue ones are more likely to drop bombs, then it makes sense to use bombs to defeat them. Even though they, they didn't drop bombs in this instance, they could have. Oh, the candle. Also, I could buy another key, which I don't know why anyone w would waste their money on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the candle. I'm going to need it eventually. I might as well. And then, uh, it immediately gives you four bushes. Which makes me think, you know, four bushes right after you, you get the candle. That's probably a hint of some sort. I don't like the candle because... A. I never know how exactly the flame has to be on the bush for it to burn. Like, I don't think you have to be that exact with it. Like, was that close enough? I don't know. And also, with the blue candle... Having to leave the screen and come back every time you, you use it... That's not like... A fun challenge or a puzzle or something that 
You know, it's not like an interesting mechanic. All it does is add tedium to the game. Okay, well, those bushes don't have anything. I stand corrected. Oh, this bush has to have something. Look at it. Sticking out there. Like a sore thumb. Uh oh. Oh, you don't say. Level 8, huh? Oh, I'm not fighting you. I'm going to run away from level 8. This is the last dungeon or the next of the last dungeon? I'm not sure. It's either the last or the next to the last. Oh. Fits me out over there. Oh, which means if I want to get to the other side, I have to go around. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to mark this on the map for sure. A sec. <clears throat> Okay, I put a purple skull with with the number 8. So this is where Dungeon 8 is located. Alright, so I'm, I'm ready for level 2. So I want to go north-northwest. Get my boomerang back out. these jumps. That was worth it. Maybe I should leave my, my bombs as my default item. Especially when fighting these mooks. Pretty dang useful. Three hits with a sword. One hit with a bomb. Wrong way. So I'm gonna go west and then north. Hey, fairy. I appreciate your help. I do know that secret... Secret doors in the over, overworld are always on north-facing flat sections of wall. And I, I don't know how precise you have to be there either. I seem to remember it requiring a pretty good bit of precision. Oh, I should get my boomerang back out. Because that immediate stun. That did not work that time. That's okay. There we go. Ah. Ah. Jeez. Ah. Unfortunately, you can't hit it with the boomerang again to, uh, to extend the period in which it's stunned. You just have to wait for it to wake up and then boomerang it again. Okay. Okay, nothing here, but I had to check. Level 2. I'm so prepared for level 2. I have a single heart. 7 bombs. I have a wooden sword. Oh yeah. Oh, these things like charge at you. Okay. Also... The fact that they force you to get the first heart container means you can't do a three heart play run, a playthrough of the game, a three heart run, which would be 
challenging, but it also means that every time you restart at the beginning of the dungeon, you have a, a fully charged magic sword. They prevent you from doing that. This is kind of interesting. Probably not. I mean, oops. And that's not a boomerang. And that's why I don't keep the bombs out by default. Ow. Ow. Alright, this is the bottom edge of the map, so I'm sure there's not going to be a secret passage to the south. Let's try here. One of the first enemies that doesn't just move around randomly. I don't know, the, the living statues seemed like they were... They had some limited amount of, like, pathfinding. Like, they moved around mostly randomly, but they would also sort of inch their, inch their way towards Link. I don't know, it's hard to tell. And the snakes just move, move around randomly until they're lined up with you, at which point they will charge you. Ooh. I don't get a chime for finding that? Thou hast done well in defeating the slimes. Alright, got the map and the compass. This dungeon is the moon, I think. Oh boy. Okay, I have one bomb. I wonder what the damage on, on the candle is like. Probably not great. Oh, I wonder if the walls stay, stay bombed after I restart. I don't remember. That was a rough room. I think I also prefer the Guardian Legend to the Legend of Zelda because I like that shooting is the... oh good, it's still bombed. Uh, shooting is the default action instead of a melee weapon. Um, because when your when your sword isn't charged up, your your hit range is just really like it is it is not long. All right, do I want to go back to the death room, or should I wait until? more life possibly more bombs okay well that's not a, not a locked door so I don't have to waste a key so I think I will go go around <clears throat> I will save a key however by uh, by bombing my way in there instead of unlocking that door so I will have an extra key which I don't think will do me much good I guess in future dungeons, it might make it possible for me to, like, do some light sequence breaking. I'm not sure. Sometimes one of the enemies on the screen is, like, the boss enemy. And if you kill it, all the other enemies on the screen die. I never really understood that mechanic, but... It's interesting. Like, I, I wonder what... Like, surely, surely that's not the case with every group of enemies, right? Because it happens so, so infrequently. Like, if every group of enemies had a boss, you would think it would happen more often. Alright, death room to the right. 
but won't have any bombs. Also don't have any arrows. Ooh. Fireworm. Okay, so that sound effect is a piece of this enemy dying. It sounds sort of, sort of similar to the boss roar. Another key. Come here, you. Owl. Crud. Alright. Well, south will just take me to the hell room. So no point in trying to bomb there. Ooh. Okay. More slimes, not a problem. Hmm. I guess every secret passage I found has just been to a room on the map. Like it's just been like an alternate way to get there. Oh, Dodongo. So this is this is the dungeon where you have to feed bombs to the dinosaur because it dislikes smoke. Which is a weird way of phrasing that, like I, th I think what it dislikes is having an explosion in its face area. I mean that seems worse than, than the smoke. But what do I know? Alright, I still haven't found a dungeon item. Hmm. Uh, but what I was saying is, I wonder if there are secret rooms that, that aren't on the map. Like, I wonder if the bombing to find a secret passage is, is just, like, alternate, alternate routes. Or if there's, like, a room that's completely sealed off. And the only way to get to it is with the bomb. But it's it's on the map, so you, so you know. Um, but I don't think that's the case because like, I remember being frustrated not knowing where to go. Or, I mean, do I remember that? It's really impossible to tell. Like, I, I remember finding secret rooms in the dungeons being a thing that I didn't like. I mean, if they're just on the map, but you need a bomb to get to them, then, then that's no, no trouble at all. All right, let's uh, let's use a couple bombs because the the reward bombs will stay on the screen. See, that's thinking. Oh, right. Okay, well, I have eight bombs. Hmm. Maybe I should kill Dodongo first, and then do the hell room. Because I'll be able to pick up the heart container, and I'll be at full health. Crud. Wait, did that count? Oh. Oh, the heart container doesn't refill your health. Oh, the Triforce does that, but that'll also force me to exit the dungeon. Oh, that's okay. I can I can come back in here. Because I, I haven't gotten a dungeon item, right? Oh, well, there's also like a whole section of the dungeon that I haven't been to. I don't know what the dungeon item for this is. I could check the manual real quick. I'm, I'm sure it's in there, but I'm about to find out. Something about the design of this dungeon from the outside makes it look like aquatic. It doesn't that doesn't that look like some sort of undersea palace? Like a combination of the color and, and also sort of like the things on its side sort of look like fish scales. I don't know. 
I guess water isn't really a thing in this game, other than having to find the raft to cross the water and having to kill the Zolas in the water. No, no swimming or like annoying dungeons where you have to raise and lower water levels. I always hate those. Eh, that's not a boomerang. I'd really prefer not to get hit, so I have my my magic sword to take on the hell goblins. Hmm. Oh, there's a key in this room. Alright, I want to save my bombs to fight these things. I have seven of them. Which should be more than enough. And I have my magic sword, at least for now. Ironic that the blue goblins or the hell goblins, you think it would be the red ones. But maybe that's like a reference to like the ninth layer of hell being frozen. Which I think is a thing from Dante's Inferno. Or it's just a thing that someone said was from Dante's Inferno, and I believe them. I've never read it. Well, so much for my magic sword. I mean, really, it's it's the fireballs that really make this the hell room. Like, I am not a fan in any game of this kind of obstacle that can't be mitigated. Oh boy. Ah, oh, crud. No! So close. Oh well, I still have five bombs. <sighs> How close is that? Fairy fountain. Eh, I'd have to go all the way around. Not worth it. But yeah, that was always like a factoid that jerks would bring up whenever someone talks about hell being frozen over. Or like uses the phrase when hell freezes over. It'd be like, um, actually. According to Dante's Inferno, the last layer of hell is frozen. So, yeah. In, in that exact voice. God, these things... Like, even the... Even the weak version of that enemy takes so many hits to kill. Crud. I wonder how soon it'll be before I find the better sword. I know there are two better swords. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, thank god. Okay, magic boomerang get. Which is the same as the other boomerang, except that it goes all the way across the screen instead of returning after a few inches. Which is helpful for getting items in hard to reach spaces, but it can also be annoying waiting for it, waiting for it to return to you. That takes longer. Wait, against the blue background of this dungeon, Link's... The green of Link's tunic looks weird. I don't know. Must be, uh... An optical illusion. It doesn't look green to me, like it looks whitish. Or maybe my, my colors on my monitor just aren't, aren't calibrated right. Or the colors in the emulator. Or my eyes are going bad. Lots of fun possibilities. All 
All right, so that's everything, right? Yeah. I seriously doubt there are secret passages that aren't, well, I shouldn't say that. Like, I, I don't think they would do that this early. They might do that at some point. Have a secret passage to a room that's not on the map. I mean, it ha has to be, right? Otherwise, that wouldn't even be a thing. I mean, it would be a thing, but it wouldn't be, like, a difficult thing. Okay. Where to next? Probably... Uh... Hmm... Well, there's another cave not too far from here. That's probably worth checking out. I just have to go south and, and then east to get to the coast. And then I should go back to one of the shops and either buy arrows or the better shield. I think the better shield would be more helpful at this point. Because arrows... They use money as ammo, right? Ooh. A well-timed fairy. Thank you. I will take it. Alright, what's in here? Another shop? All right. Yeah, I think I'll get the better shield. Look at that. Now that is protection. Which, yeah, I, I can block the, uh, the Zola's fireballs now. Also, I think it would block the fireballs uh, from the statues. Sure looks like the same sprite to me. Okay. These bushes look suspicious. Okay. That checks out. What about your buddy? Okay, nothing there. Alright, level 3 is a pretty good distance away. Basically, I just want to keep going west. Until I get back to around where the starting area is. Oh. <clears throat> I guess you can really walk around it. Above, not below the stairs. Also, what the heck? Nintendo censored any religious imagery in their games, but Link's allowed to have a, a cross on his shield? Like, that is definitely a crucifix. Like, it's not just a plus sign. That is a, a Christian cross. But they took all of the, the crosses out of the, the Dragon Warrior games. And they made the priest class, uh, they, they made them call it a pilgrim. There's lots of weird censorship. I mean, not censor censorship, but weird localization changes. Because they were obsessed with not having religion in their games at all for a while. But, you know, again, a cross is okay. If it's Link. Also that controversial scene in Super Mario World where Luigi calls himself the next Jesus. Like they left that in. That's a joke. Luigi would never think that highly of himself. That's more of a Wario move. Alright, uh, I think I want to 
go below this lake. I think if I go above the lake, that'll take me somewhere I'm not ready to be at. Yeah, these things just disappear too quickly. Ah, just one of those annoyances that you can't mitigate. I seem to remember one of these bushes being burnable. And I have no idea which one it would be. Like, I don't think there are any burnable bushes that are, like, packed together. Like, I think all of them are sort of, you know, they sort of stand individually. But on this screen, that's like all of them. I mean, it's whatever it is, it's not going to be essential. So, this is a come back when I have the red, red candle kind of situation. Ah, <sighs> so frustrating. Get my boomerang back. Wait, I already have half of the items. Wow. Well, I mean, there's the... Wait, is there a better bow or do you just get better arrows? I think once I buy the arrows, I can upgrade those to silver arrows. I think the bow is just the bow. And then the blue candle will be upgraded to the red candle. But geez, there's like... So there's arrows, which take up an inventory slot. There's the power bracelet, the ring, which reduces the amount of damage you take, uh, the raft, the ladder, the... Is there a wand in this game? I want to say there's like a rod that shoots fire. That was in this, that was in this game, right? Or was that not until Link to the Past? Hmm. Well, I think the ring and the power bracelet are in a different part of the menu because they're not like selectable. They're just always active. Hmm. Oh well. Oh, so many flat surfaces. I could be bombing. Dang. I wasn't expecting to actually find anything. Okay. Well, that is 30 rupees. That is 30 more rupees than I had before. Okay, uh, let me, well, I guess there's no point in marking it because it's not like I want to look at the screen later or look at this part of the map later and wonder what it is. There's no question mark here, and there's no reason for me to, like, come back here ever. Yeah. Yeah, that's not... There's no reason to mark that. I mean, I might come back to the screen and forget what was there, and be like, what was this? And I go in the cave, and I'm like, oh yeah, there's, like, money or something here. Alright, so south will take me back to the starting area. Does the old man just disappear once you have the sword? Or does he stick around to like encourage you? Yeah, he just disappears. This is kind of a lonely game. Like the NPCs just vanish. I guess there are some repeatable NPCs, like there's the old lady. That you give the letter to and he makes potions for you. But that's just like a different kind of shopkeeper, basically. Alright, I want to go west and then north and then west and then cross the bridge. Oh, hang on, this arrow is pointing east. I better go that way. 
cutscenes are so hard to hit. Oh wait, this is a this is a different item shop, isn't it? Also, why do the rocks look like snails? I mean, they're cute. It's just a bit curious. Oh, uh, no arrows here, which I wouldn't have enough money anyway. All right, let me mark this. Uh. I wonder if I should jot down what they sell. That would be useful information too. Oh, I don't have like a pen, just my markers. All right. Um give me a sec. Okay. I paused the recording, which is something that I can do when it's not live. And uh, I marked the shop on the map, and I wrote down that I can buy a shield and a key here. <clears throat> uh, there's no reason I'll ever need to buy a blue candle again, so uh, no reason to mark that down. Really, I'll never need to buy a key either. Um, but if I lose my big shield, um, which you can lose it by having it eaten by a monster, I can buy another one. Although it's more expensive here than in the other shop, but I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry about that. Also, another reason I want to say I like Guardian Legend better than this game is I think. Pickups in that game, they don't disappear until you leave the screen. And in this game, I think, they they blink out of existence after a few moments. I was going to test it there, but I wanted that heart and that bomb. Which, that sucks. I mean, wh why have them blink out of existence if, you know, if it's not like hitting a sprite limit or something? It's just like punishing you for being careful. And in Guardian Legend, I, I want to say once something's on the screen, uh, it's there until you leave the screen. Which again, the game came out several years later, so they had a chance to learn. Oh, I should mark this on the map. Um. <clears throat> Alright, I don't really have a symbol, so I, I just wrote old lady map. I, I don't know what I mean. Did I already check both of these bushes? I think I did. Doesn't matter, I'm checking them again anyway. Alright, so west, south, east. Not southeast. Can't go southeast. West, south, and then east. Which, I mean, that's, you know, relative to my current position, that's southeast. But it's not a direction that I can choose to go. Oh, that's a sus suspicious bush. Never mind. That is a perfectly ordinary bush. Sorry I ever questioned it. Or a P.O.B. As they're known in the biz. Perfectly ordinary bush. Oh, more of these statues. I, I don't think any of the dungeon statues have any secrets. But I also have no actual basis for thinking that, so... I gotta check each one. I got to. I'm sorry. 
hopefully I, I can get this timing down. And fighting these uh, statues will be more of a, a piece of cake, which it looks like it is. Ah, famous last words. Hmm. Okay, nothing. I have to, I have to be sure. Now I'm not bombing every square inch of every wall. I don't have to be sure about that. Because that involves grinding, and I would like to avoid grinding if possible. Oh man, the colors in this one are weird too. Like this time Link's skin looks weird. Oh. Like I, I think it's like, I'm sure it's just an illusion. But it's surprising. Okay, so now we're starting to get into the dungeons that I don't know as well. Like, one and two I've done... Oh, right. These things split. One and two I've done a fair number of times. Um, three and four... Less... Fewer times, and everything after that, I don't know if I've done since I was a child. Really? No reward? And what about these blocks? I wonder, like, the perspective is weird, but these are supposed to be like pyramid shaped blocks, right? Or, I guess, ziggurat-shaped blocks, because they're flat on top. I don't know, there's a lot of weird perspective stuff in the Zelda games. Alright, again, I'm going to say that there's probably nothing south, because that's the bottom of the map. I remember bombs being effective against these things because the blast lingers on screen long enough to kill some of the ads. Yeah, that works well. Of course, I can't just go around using my bombs willy-nilly like that. I wonder if the candle has the same effect because it lingers a bit too. Yeah, not bad. I've seen worse. Do I want to use my last two bombs breaking these walls? I don't think so. I might check them later. Oh god, these things. These things are hell. Incarnate. Like, if... If Doom didn't have an enemy called the Baron of Hell, I would nickname this thing the Baron of Hell. Oh god, it's so frustrating. You have to attack it. From the side or the back. Their movement is completely random. And they take just buttloads of hits to kill. And this is just the the red version. The blue version is much worse. You can't stun them. Pretty sure you can bomb them. You can't candle them. I think if I had arrows, I could shoot them, but not from the front either. Ah, just a bad time. I, I also hate whatever Binding of Isaac enemy was inspired by this thing. I'm sure I've, I've ranted about that in many of my Binding of Isaac videos. Alright, the fact that it's giving me bombs as a reward makes me think that they're going to be necessary for something. So I'd better hang on to them. Oh, a locked door, eh? Well, let me see if I can find a key. 
I know I have one around here somewhere. <sighs> Maybe it gave me the bombs to help me with these. Whatever they are. Like a shovel knight, but instead of a shovel, it has a sword. What do you call that? Sword knight? Again, the, the death penalty, pretty generous, especially compared to a lot of other NES games. You know, it just bounces you back to the, the dungeon entrance, entrance, you don't lose any items or progress. Everything that you filled in on the map is still there, so you know where you have to go. Like, when, when I say I like the Guardian Legend better than this game, that's not to, like, denigrate this game in any way. Like, especially compared to its contemporaries, this game is incredibly well designed. And it can be impossible to figure out what to do, but that's why they, they gave you so much information in, in the map and the manual. That doesn't even kill it in one one bomb. Oh no. Oh jeez. I do use bombs. I definitely wanna try to get a cluster of them, but like they move pretty quickly, relatively, relative to the amount of time it takes the bomb to explode. So. Bit of a crapshoot. Takes so many hits. And that's what you want when you have to fight the knights. A damn time stopper. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, there's so many of them. The NES can't handle it. I'm not killing these. I'm going down the stairs. You can't stop me. Alright, I got the raft. Again, an item that you you can't use yet. I mean, for for a different reason than the bow. I wonder if all the underground dungeon items are, th are things that you can't use. Oh, and also the raft is, it's not a selectable item. That makes sense. You just automatically use it when you go to a dock. And I'm sure the ladder works the same way. Okay. So there, there will be room to hold all of my items. Oh, I forget what these fuzzy balls do. I remember it's bad though. And I, re and I remember they can't be killed by anything. Oh. Oh, they stun you. I couldn't attack for a second there. And they don't disappear when you clear the room. Oh, that is, that is mean. the mean stuff is starting to show up. Oh, I guess this is another reason you might want to draw draw a map, because there are parts of dungeons like this where it's not totally obvious that I, I can't go south from here. Mm hmm. One of these days, I'm going to return to Zelda 2 because I did like it, and I think drawing a map would help me in those dungeons. Like, I remember that being an issue. Also, I've never looked at the manual for Zelda 2, so there might be 
a whole bunch of vital information that would have helped. Like, I wonder if that game came with a map. Who knows? I never owned Zelda 2. Hmm. I, so I don't know. I wish they would, like, reissue. I wish Nintendo... Here's what I want them to do. I want them to reissue the original Zelda and maybe Zelda 2 in a physical form that comes with, like, a reproduction of the original manual and map. And, like, maybe some, like, some stickers you can put on the map to, like, mark items or, or mark discoveries. Like, you know, like a... A real world version of the pins from Breath of the Wild. Because I think these games are still playable and people would be interested in revisiting them. But without the map and the manual, I think people just get stuck because they don't realize how how vital that stuff is. And I know that like in the virtual console versions of Zelda and maybe maybe Well, no, I guess it would just be the virtual console versions. They would have included uh, digital versions of the the manual and I assume the map because the the thing that I downloaded from Ninten Nintendo's website has both. But like in the GBA re-release, I wonder like it would have included a manual. I wonder if it would have been as comprehensive as the NES manual. And I wonder if it came with a map. Like, who knows? And also, there was... Like, didn't one of the GameCube games have, like, a bonus disc that had the original Legend of, Legend of Zelda? Like, there have, there have been ways to replay this game over the years, but none of them were, like, the... Like, they were all compromised experiences compared to the the NES version because you don't have the physical physical manual and the physical map and on the physical map you could have jotted down notes you could have marked where things are and it's so much easier to consult than a digital version you know you don't have to bring up some some awkward menu every time you want to see it so they should re-release like a physical version of the first couple of Zelda games that has all that stuff. For the Switch. For $20. Because it is like a 30 year old game. 35. 36? 37? Jesus. But I think uh, that would give the original Zelda games a new lease on life. I think with the, the physical components, they would be a lot more enjoyable for a new generation of gamers. My contact info is in my profile, Miyamoto. Give me a holler. Ah, that's not a boomerang. Wait, Link has a hard time telling a boomerang from a bomb. Those items do not look similar. At all. What a doofus. Well, I'm close to the boss, which I am not prepared for. Um... Wait a sec. Why isn't why isn't this room connected on the map? Oh, that doesn't hurt me. Oh, it oh, all it does is stun me. Okay, that's not as bad. Yeah, that's so weird. 
Like it's it's a sh it's a shutter door. Oh man, I have to kill these things again. Okay. Oh boy. This is a boss. Like this is a boss boss. Okay, well. I wonder if my shield blocks these fireballs. If I test and it doesn't block those fireballs, then, then I'm dead. That's not a bomb. See? There, there's that weird item dyslexia again. Oh, Jesus. That thing got fast. I was checking the map to see if there's a fairy fountain nearby. There's one not too far from here. Also another cave that might be an item shop. I can stock up on bombs before I attempt that again. Because this dungeon has killed me quite a few times. Okay, I want to go east and then south. There's a little out of the way cave here that I missed. Meet the old man at the grave. I suppose <clears throat> I should uh, make a note of that. That's pretty vague. And there's no point in, in like writing that on the map. So I just typed it up. At least she sticks around. Okay, so that's not an item shop. And I don't feel like bothering. Wait, this is an item shop. But does it sell bombs? I don't think it does. Oh, no, that's not an item shop. That, that's the mysterious old lady. Uh, okay, I don't think I meant to come this way, but while I'm here, I might as well see what this is. Well, I could buy arrows, but that would leave me with enough to shoot one of them. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to have to get them eventually. Oh, that just updates the icon. It doesn't add it to your, to your item box. That makes sense. All right, I'm going to pause this real quick while I write down what the shop sells. Okay, I'm back. I wrote down that the shop sells uh, shield and bomb. I, I don't think I'll ever need to buy arrows again. So, no point in making a note of that. As far as I know, there's no, no arrow stealing enemy in this game. Uh, there's a question mark on the map there. Which means I'm going to have to fight these statues before I go to the fountain. That's okay. No idea if that was, like, centered enough. I already bought something. Stop hassling me, the man. I'm not hurting anyone by standing here and reading the comic books. Alright. Plan of action. Kill the sand bugs first. Ooh. Okay. Well, if I can avoid getting hit, I won't have to go to the fairy fountain. It's just a couple screens away, but 
Also, it might not actually be a fairy fountain. It might just be a lake. I don't know. I don't know why I say fountain, because it's not a fountain in this game. It's a lake. Nice. Nice shot, Zach. Incredible. There's definitely not going to be two staircases on the screen, right? That's not a thing. Oh no. Oh, I was almost six for six. Oh, that, that boomerang hit it. Okay, well, I might, I might be making a trek to the fairy fountain. Oh, this stuff is really expensive. 250. That's like almost as many rupees as my wallet can hold. Okay, well, definitely want to write, make a note of this one. One moment. Okay, I'm back. Also, I checked the manual, and the blue ring is the, the less powerful of the two. Uh, it reduces the amount of damage you take by half. Which is still a pretty big deal. So I will be... I might I might be saving up for this. I might not buy anything else until I have this. Because that would be like huge. That's also a lot of money. Uh, and th it tells you, like if you look at the map, it tells you straight out that the red ring is in the final dungeon. So, you know. Spoiler alert, or not not the map, uh, that's something in the manual. Oh, you know, it is the map. It's, uh, it's in the how to make an adventure map section. Also, it tells you that you get the ladder in level 4, the whistle in level 5, the rod. There is a rod in level 6, the red candle in level 7. The book in level 8, and I forget what the book does in this game. And then the red ring in level 9. Which is Death Mountain, which makes it a red ring of death. Oh ho. Take that, Microsoft. Uh. Oh yeah. I wanted to see what the, what the rod does. I think it, like... It's fire, which makes it like a blue candle or a red candle that you can use at a distance. Yeah, magic wand. Link picks up the magic book and learns some new spells. He can chant some fiery spells and send out flames. Ooh, that sounds good. I can't wait until I get that in the next to the last level of the game. Oh well. You get the magic wand in level 6, which is pretty good. You have it for uh, the last three dungeons. <clears throat> okay, oops. Okay, well, thanks for being chill about it. See, in this one, it, it pops you out right next, to, right next to the staircase. I wonder why it doesn't do that for the level 8 entrance. All right, what was I doing? All right, so I want to go west and then north, and I think this is going to be a fairy lake, or just a regular lake. Yay! They wouldn't put a secret on the same screen as the fairy, would they? Probably not. I'm not going to check. I'm going to go back to level three. Which means south, 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 east. Right after I check these bushes with my boomerang. Will these goblins respawn? Or, I'm sorry, moblins? 
Moblins. I'm sure there's a canonical pronunciation for each of the enemy's names. But I barely know the canonical names. So, I know those things aren't Octoroks. Uh, the things that aren't Moblins are Octoroks. And I, th I know these are Moblins. Or Moblins. I've heard both. And I know Dodongo because because of Link's famous quote. I can't wait to bomb some some Dodongos. All right, I checked all this crap. an awful lot of money on arrows that I can't really use yet. I mean, I can, but I have to save up 250 rupees to get the ring. And again, I would really rather not grind because I don't think it's necessary. Like, you know, one of the things that I praised Guardian Legend for was the resource distribution, how it was good at giving you what you need when you need it, and I'm getting the same sense from this game. Like, if you're low on bombs, it feels like it's more, more likely to, to drop bombs. Of course, it doesn't know that I need 250 rupees, or does it? Who knows? It might. But I haven't... I haven't gotten a lot of rupees since buying the arrows. Alright, just real quick test. Alright, you can't hit them from the front. If you hit from you can't hit them from the side. Or the back. The arrows, they're immune to arrows. Oh, screw you, knights. I have no interest in fighting you. Uh oh. That helps. Ah, uh, yes. The Manji Dungeon. Not the Swastika Dungeon. Swastika goes the other way. This is a manji. It's a symbol that has been used in religious contexts for hundreds or thousands of years. Not saying everyone should go around drawing manjis because haha, ha, it looks like a swastika. But, you know, it is not a not a reference to that when used in Japan. It's also widely used in India and possibly lots of other places. There's no need to cancel the, the Legend of Zelda over this. All of the dungeons are different shapes in, in the second quest too, right? Like, I've never played it or watched a playthrough of it. Like, a full playthrough. Like, I've watched bits and pieces of it. And at some point, I think I put in... Uh, Zelda as my character name. And skipped there just to see what it was like. And I eventually... Found a dungeon. Sword from the old man on top of the waterfall. No, but that that's a good hint. Well, it's a good hint if it's true. Sword old man, top of waterfall. I seem to rem 
I seem to remember these some of these hints being uh, badly translated to the point of being lies. And I don't know if that's the case here. I kind of want to keep checking walls and seeing if there are any off-map secrets. And I'm sure everyone who, who knows is shouting at their computer screen at me wasting all, all, all of these bombs. Or not wasting them but not bombing in the right locations. Which is also a possibility. At least in dungeons you know exactly where to put the bombs, unlike the overworld. I mean, you don't know where there's going to be a secret door, but, like, I know I don't have to put a bomb, like, like here, right? It's always going to be in the middle of the wall, which I appreciate. Alright, where have I not been? Pretty much just the boss. And I forget what the boss of this level is. wonder if I should save my bomb for the boss. Ugh. Ugh. Audible moan. Ooh. Well, that would be handy for the boss. Assuming I can keep it. Does the sword beam do less damage than hit hitting them directly? I don't know. Sorry, just wanted to check something real quick. things have a skull in the middle of them. I never noticed that, noticed that before. That might not have been super visible on a CRT. Oh right, this thing. Okay, so I do know what the boss is, never mind. Alright, let's get very far away from it. I didn't do I didn't do a very good job of getting far away from it. Well that was a waste. My shield doesn't block these. Oh god. Oh jeez. The snips are after me. Oh no. Like this thing is so fast and I feel so sluggish in comparison. Ugh. Ugh. Now I have no bombs, no money, no cash, no jobs, no hope. I have, I have four keys though. Maybe I should throw some keys at it. Do these things not drop anything? That is frustrating. Because they're so plentiful. Kinda want to go back to the fairy lake. That boss sucks. But God, I don't, I don't want to fight it with no bombs. And I don't want to grind out 
20 gold so I can go buy more bombs. Maybe I should just go fight some enemies that drop bombs? That would probably be faster than grinding money. I think I called it gold. Not gold. It's rupees. Totally fictional currency. I have to fight those knights every time. I want to get back to the boss. That's a bummer. Also, I feel like the knights aren't dropping much either. Ugh. Oh, the real Legend of Zelda starts here. Oh, bombs. Nice. Right now I just need a fairy. Well, a clock and then a fairy. Okay, so these are dropping stuff. Well, I got four bombs. And those are mine to keep. Also, the home version of The Legend of Zelda. Wait, when, when you hit these things, they just go flying. Sometimes. Like, you have to hit them exactly on center. If you're, like, off-center. Or, or, no? Sometimes they, they just don't go flying. Maybe, maybe if it's, like, right after they move, or right when they're about to move. Yeah, there's no reason to kill these. They're not dropping squat. They're not even dropping diddly squat. Oh, maybe I should fight more of the knights and try to get more bombs. I hate the idea of that. Have I- have I played this game on stream before? Like, I just had a flash of deja vu. I, I don't think so. I've talked about it a lot on stream. Which must be what I'm remembering. Or, or I'm just remembering complaining about them during Binding of Isaac. I'm sure that, that was a thing. <sighs> Whoa. Glitched out for a sec. Ugh. All right, I think four bombs might be enough to defeat that thing. I just have to. Well, okay, eight bombs are definitely enough to defeat it. I just have to place them strategically, and ideally, not be at one heart when I bomb it. Oh, I'm never going to hit it with a second bomb, though. Like, it's so fast. Ugh. Alright, well. Here goes something. God. Oh, that could not have, have gone better. Oh, thank you. Thank you, RNG. Oh, boy. Alright, well, that is four... three pieces of the Triforce down. It feels like four. Because I left this, this dungeon and came back. But we are not quite at the halfway mark yet. I'm sure now you give me the clock. Okay, level four is uh, not far from here. Alright, so it is just, uh, east a couple times, and then north. 
Now that I have the raft, I can get across that lake. And we will see what horrors the fourth dungeon has to offer. Maybe I should go looking for the sword. Like, the fact that it gave me the clue about the sword in that dungeon leads me to wonder if I'm if I'm ready to get it yet. Sorry, I'm checking the map to see if there's a waterfall on it. Because if not, I don't know. There is a waterfall on it, and it is. Uh, it's accessible. It's pretty far from here. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to try it. I want to see if I can get that sword. I re I remember it being guarded by something pretty nasty. But I have eight bombs. Which might be all the bombs I'm ever going to have. Like, I forget if you can upgrade your bomb capacity in this game. This is, uh, level 4. Which has the, uh, the same kind of aquatic motif, which is appropriate. Oh, these things take so long to stop. The map says that, that they give hearts, and I was wondering if they always give hearts, or if they're just more likely to give hearts. Not stopping. What's the what's the, what's the deal? What's the trick? They're supposed to slow down so I can attack them, and it didn't drop a heart. Okay, just just experimenting. Also, the waterfall does have a question mark on the map, which means there is something there. Means that hint might be accurate. I don't know how I get to the top of the waterfall. I know how I get to the waterfall. And the Zola's fireballs look just like the other fireballs. I don't understand why I can block these, but not the ones that that boss spit out. I'm suing. I'm suing Nintendo. Hear that, Miyamoto? Hear that, Reggie? Hope you have good lawyers. Nah, Nintendo doesn't have good lawyers. Ooh! That was random. Come on, 250. That is not 250. There's no question mark on the map, so no reason I have to mark that. Do I want to go through the desert? Hang on. My, my map is black and white, which uh, I only have black and white printer. Of course, I, I guess the sand isn't really differentiated on the, the color map either. Just all the same uniform color. Okay, I don't want to go that way. I'm going to go west, then north, then east a bunch of times. Okay. <clears throat> west right into the staircase. Like, I really don't know why that one took so long to stop. That didn't drop a heart. Ah, screw it. Not worth it. Like, even if I was low on health. All right. The falling rocks. Even if I was low on health, it wouldn't be worth it. It would be faster to go back to a fairy lake. 
you know, rocks are described in the game as an enemy. Which is kind of funny. Are, are those actually the rock monsters from... Um, Ocarina of Time. Well, I have enough to buy all of these. Will it be worth it, though? What? I thought it was going to be three different hints of different values. Don't tell me the, the 20 is going to be the only good one. I hate you, old lady. Like, just ask for 20. I would have given you 20. Wow, thanks. I totally wasn't going to do that anyway. <sighs> Ooh, a centaur. Gary. Have my master using it? I have. I don't feel like I mastered using it, but, uh... Hey, I'll take it. I think I, re I remember reading that that, like, you have to have a certain number of heart containers before you can get that. Ooh, which would be another reason not to do a three heart run. Alright, well this should make my life significantly easier. Wait. Oh, was the hint... You say go up, up, and I can only go up once here. I know the map has a bunch of, like, mazes. Okay, so that was up, up. Maybe, maybe she meant keep going up? Ooh. Level five. Okay. Well, I'm I'm glad I know this for future reference. Give me one moment. I will mark this on my map. Okay. Mark mapping complete. Oh, do I want to check all these statues? There hasn't been anything so far. Well, shut my mouth. Wait. Uh? Definitely the same entrance. I'm checking all of them just to be sure. I'm sure there's not going to be anything else. But it doesn't hurt. And I, I can practice my, my boomerang timing. Which is only useful against this one enemy. But why? I thought maybe killing all of, all of them and going down the stairs would make it lead somewhere different somehow. All right, I, I'm grasping at straws, but is that like a hint that I that I have to bomb above it? I have no idea. I I don't know why that's there. Maybe something changes. Hmm. So, the rest of the map, like, past this is blank. Which means, I mean, I assume it just keeps repeating forever. And the only direction that doesn't repeat forever is left and up. But I wonder if that's going to be the case for the other blank parts of the map, too. Ah.
<laughs> right. <gasps> hey, I still got the heart somehow. I can kill Zola in one hit. Wait, that mean that would mean it's way more than double damage, wouldn't it? Because it took more than two hits without the white sword. Huh. I should find a better place to test. Oh, this day's reveal? Nice. I mean, not that I have a reason to go back there, but... Oh yeah, of course this day's revealed because the, the entrance to, to level 8 stayed revealed. Alright, where's the nearest fairy lake? Alright, south, south, east, north, north. If I can live that long. Look at all those rupees. Dang. I should kill more of the sand crawlers. A relief. Speaking of relief, I have to use the restroom, so I'm going to pause the video recording. And I am back. Hello. I also noticed that my controller was starting to blink at me, which is a problem, so I plugged that in. Uh, make sure that doesn't become a problem. So I'm only collecting one piece of the Triforce, right? Like, one piece that's been divided into eight seg segments. It's actually kind of confusing that they call it the Triforce in this game. Well, I mean, I guess it's a triangle, but... It doesn't really have three of them like it has in later games. Interesting. I wonder... I wonder to what extent the Triforce is a thing in Zelda 2. Possible that I saw that and I just don't remember. But like they were seems like they were planning some sequels. Which is cool. You know, they were thinking about the whole uh you know, world building video game universe thing from the beginning, maybe. Okay, well, I have my my fancy sword. I think it's time to go to level 4. And then after that, I think I might end the video there. Making excellent time. Uh, we're just at the 2 hour mark. And I'm... I'm almost at the 4th dungeon already. I'm sure the back half, half of this game will take much longer. Because I'm less familiar with it. And it's also a lot harder. But I think I can wrap this up in two or three videos. And I thought about doing like classic Let's Play style where every every dungeon is an episode and I post, you know, an, an episode every day. But I, th I think that model is a little outdated. And I think I will just do the, the thing where I put timestamps and divide the video up into a bunch of sections. It's like Netflix. You can binge watch it or you can watch it at your own pace. If a two and a half, three hour video is too much, then watch the first section. You know, watch one set one section every day. I recently watched a six hour video of a review of the game Tokimeki Memorial, which is arguably the first dating sim ever made for the Super Famicom. It's never gotten 
an English release. Uh, that's over at actionbutton.net or the Action Button YouTube channel. I don't think there is anything at actionbutton.net just yet. I should probably fix that. But it's an excellent review, and I watched it over the course of three or four days. And the author of the video basically encourages you to think of it more like a miniseries where you watch, you know, it's divided up into, into chapters and you can watch a chapter a day or if you have six hours and you feel like it, you can watch the whole thing. But however you choose to watch it, I really recommend it. It's one of the better, you know, more interesting video game analysis videos I've ever watched and I mean it I mean it's pretty much a review and a let's play you can skip the let's play if you want which I found it fascinating whoa this thing is so goth it shits bats boy that's a that's a golden oldie huh I just pulled that out of some dark corner of my memory. But yeah, Tokimeki Memorial. Fascinating game. Another question I have about Secret Passages is... Is there always going to be... Like... If there was a secret room to the left of where I, where I am, would I be able to bomb my way in from either side? Or is it possible for only one side to be accessible? Ooh. Darkness. I have just the solution for that. Ow. That's cool. It, it gives you an item that you think will only have one use. Unless you read the manual, which I'm sure specifies that it has multiple uses, but let's say let's say you forgot about that. You know, you think the, the candle was just for burning bushes. You get to a dark room. You're like, wait, I have a candle. Will that? I'll light up the room, and then you try it, and it does. You try it and it does is probably one of the best feelings in video games. Okay, there has to be a secret here. Because this room is complicated and it was dark. And I can't test the walls because I'm out of bombs. And try pushing all these blocks. Well, they wouldn't let you push a block. Somewhere that would block your path. Hmm. Alright, well. Put a pin in that. I'm back here when I have some bombs. Guess that's another reason you might want to draw your own map. I don't think these things drop items either. I don't think any of the one-hit boomerang killable enemies drop items or or any of the, the enemies that spawn them. But yeah, it blows my mind that people balk at watching a six hour YouTube video or you know, they they act like that's just an unthinkable thing to ask of them. But then they'll go on to, like, recommend an 80-hour TV show. With, like, the caveat, oh, it, it really gets good after the first 20 hours. Like, that that's such, like, a disconnect for me. Like... I don't really watch TV shows of that length, generally. 
at least not not serialized ones because it's, it's such a time investment and if if it's made with the american model of television then the quality is wildly variable because the writers don't know how long the show is going to be on and they have to make up a lot of it as they go and they have to wing it and it's just generally you know it's not a well-crafted experience which i mean that's not the writer's fault that's just the way american tv works like you the the tv show goes forever until either uh it's canceled or in the case of the simpsons it becomes a zombie show just a parody of anything that was ever good about it that will go on forever and never end because that's just the way tv works here and i'd much rather watch like a well-crafted six hour video you know not all at once or maybe sometimes all at once maybe i'm sick in bed and i have a lot of time to kill and a six hour video is just what i need what i need but once you finish the six hours, you know, that's it. It's like much less of a time investment than, you know, a TV show with multiple seasons or, I mean, or a video game. You know, I play long video games. But with a video game, it has like a definitive beginning and end. It's not like... you know, drawn out over the course of years with the writers unsure of, you know, how much more time they have. Sometimes with a totally different writing team or a writing team that changes over the course of it. Like, like it's still a single authored experience, which I think is, you know, it makes it a uh, better, better form of entertainment for, for me. Even if it is long. A ladder. Ah, so here's an instance where we, we find an item and we immediately get to use it. Because there, there was a one tile wide moat in one of the previous rooms that we can now cross with the ladder. I don't know why I keep saying we. Like, I don't know why that was ever a thing. Worse of habit, I guess. But I mean, I don't know why we became the pronoun to use when let's play in the first place. I mean, we're not actually playing the game together. You're, you're watching me play. Not sure what the shape of this dungeon is going to be. Oh, I'm about to find out. I don't. Oh, never mind. Oh, the old bait and switch. So close and yet so far away. All right, nothing happened when I when I cleared the room. So I just gotta go around. And I like it better when enemies don't respawn immediately upon leaving the room and coming back in. Like, wasn't that how, how it worked in the first dungeon? Or is that just the overworld? Hey. Never mind. I was about to say my health is so low. And then it became as low as possible. I haven't saved yet. I did make a save state during one of my my video pauses. So power suddenly goes out. I won't lose that much progress. Uh
I don't know why I killed all the bats. Totally unnecessary. You know what the map is starting to look like? Trogdor. Level 4, the Trogdor dungeon. I haven't found any bombs in a while. <clears throat> I would really love to just put a bomb right in the middle of this room and just blow it all up. Blow up the gargoyles and the bats that they spawn. These dark slimes do seem like they drop items. Which is cool. Also, they don't split. I'm glad I got this sword. I'm sure it's making task a lot easier. Alright. I have no reason to kill these. Or these. Alright, this should be the map room, right? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, it's not Trogdor. I think it's I think it's a snake. Oh I just had a memory. I'm pretty sure you can bomb the way in bomb your way into the snake's eye. That could be completely wrong. Maybe it's some other dungeon? Oh no. Uh, with an eye. I don't want to fight this with zero bombs. Okay, well, there's an item shop with bombs not too far from here, but I would ha I would have to spend all my money to get eight. Sucks. I think I might fight some goblins instead, like some of the bl some of the blue goblins. I think are more likely to drop bombs than some of the other enemies, some of the other blue enemies. I don't know where to find blue goblins. Well, they, ge they generally hang out in like foresty areas. Alright, I think there's some to the west here. Yeah. I could just like get two enemies to drop bombs. That would be so helpful. I really don't like I want that ring. And I mean 40 rupees. Like it's not super you know, it's not like a huge savings account, but it it's Significant, you know, it's it's a chunk of money. Fifty rupees, fifty-five rupees. That's like a fifth of what I need. What I need. Okay. Well, my they they drop bombs frequently. Theory is not uh, not panning out. All right, these bushes have got to go. Two hundred? Three hundred? Oh, that's like the mate. This is the maze area. Or as it's marked on the map, 
the Lost Woods. Hmm, do the Moblins respawn every time you change? No. That, that would be a good way to grind for bombs, potentially, if they drop bombs. I tried all of these bushes, I forget. It sure looks suspect. Three bushes, three, three green bushes in the middle of a bunch of brown bushes. Or are they, is that an arrow? Is it pointing to the right? And telling me that I actually need to burn a bush on this screen. No. Wait. Didn't I just leave and come back? I thought I did. So if I kill two of these Octoroks, leave the screen and come back. Okay, it still just has the one there. Interesting. I thought you might need to kill the entire group of enemies for them not to respawn. Alright, I still- there's, there's a letter I'm going to get somewhere that I have to give her and then she starts selling me potions. I do remember that. I don't remember where you get the letter. I think it's another random NPC that you find. Okay, there's a there's a shop that sells bombs just to the north of here. I'm gonna get four. That should be enough to defeat that monster. And this is also the sensor shop. Or, or no, the expensive shop is north. These bushes are nothing, right? Yeah, the expensive shop is under one of those statues. I think I tried these bushes and, and it was nothing. Okay. Alright, south, south, east, north, north. I think the map that it gives you might be more complete than I thought. Because I, I think all of the blank areas like the only the only blank area that I filled in is the the place where you get the white sword, and all all of the blank area surrounding that that's just it's an infinite loop. So maybe the map is like mostly complete. Maybe I should have gotten eight bombs because I do want to try bombing the snake's eye. And see if that's anything. I am recording, right? I did unpause. Okay. I don't, I don't pause videos very often. I mean, I usually do it live, which I mean, that's no that's no reason not to pause it, I guess. Yeah, I should really do that when I take restroom breaks and whatnot. Just pause the video. I, I, I used to do that. I forget why why I stopped. Like I can keep streaming and just pause the video and unpause it when I come back. These things drop a lot of money. Do these immediately respawn? 
Because if I do have to grind, no. So the gargoyles immediately respawn, but not the useful enemy that, that drops money. Awesome. I think at some point I started recording in MP4 rather than MKV. Oh, that's not a bomb. And you, you can't pause the recording when when it's an MP4. But there's no reason to actually record in MP4. Like it's it's way better to record in, in MKV and then just remux it to MP4. Or just upload the The raw MKV. I mean, YouTube can handle that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I stopped. Aha! Ooh. N. Well, I'll be honest. I was hoping for more, but I will take it. I guess. Dang. You can go every which way from here. Man, I think... I, I, like, I used to think that you had to kill the centaur to get the white sword. So I, I didn't get it until way later because the centaur is super hard to kill. But you can just go right past that thing. Like, that would have made my life so much easier. I keep switching to this boomerang, but I'm not really using it. Maybe I should leave the candle out. Or maybe I should use the boomerang more. Yeah, I bet I can bomb that wall too. Which makes me think that if you can bomb from one direction, you can probably bomb from any direction. Walk into the waterfall. Way ahead of you, buddy. Unless you mean another waterfall, which I'm, I'm sure I would try to walk into that one too. You don't just see a waterfall and not try to walk into it. I mean, this is video games. Alright, gotta kill these. Because you can't push the block that opens the door until all the enemies are gone, right? Pretty sure that's a thing. I think I read that in the manual. Yeah. Alright, this is gonna be the boss room, and I have zero bombs. I have plenty of rupees if I wanna shoot some arrows. If it's something that is vulnerable to arrows. Ooh. Nope. Are you vulnerable to candles? No. Oh, I just lost my magic sword. That's great. Alright, well. Looks like we are doing this the old-fashioned way. They can move. Pop and pop. I can't stay. I can't spray and pray. I have nothing to spray. What else can I do? Um. Bob and weave? Ooh. That's an angry dragon head. Feel bad killing all these dragons because yesterday was Dragon Appreciation Day. Oh my god. Oh jeez. I 
enemies in dungeons drop so few hearts. So few of them. Hearts and bombs. And money. Like, most of, the, most of the enemies I'm fighting aren't dropping anything. It's just the... The dark slimes. That's it. <coughs> Excuse me. And they're pretty much just dropping money. Ugh. I really don't want to have to go to a go to a fairy fountain every time I every time I die in a dungeon. Might be necessary though. Hope not. It's so hard to hit stuff. Oh, does my own candle hurt me? Or or was that me getting hit by the by the fuzzball? The fuzz skull. Hang on. It does hurt me. Well, now I know. Mm. Use B button for this. Um, it's still better than knights. Like, the enemies in this dungeon aren't, aren't hard, it's just annoying. Annoying having to kill all, all of these enemies that there's no reason to. Did that thing split into four, or were there two of them there? And annoying not to be able to replenish my resources before I fight the boss. Yeah, that thing about it being good, about giving you the resources you need, that might just be the early dungeon. Because I feel like it's being stingy right now. At least in the dungeons. The overworld seems pretty, pretty well supplied. Okay, I was just wondering if like the rupees respawned or or anything. That would that would be nice of it. But no, I think these are the NPCs. Yeah, if you hit them, they start spewing fire at you. That's pretty fun. I guess killing these bats would be easier if I did use my boomerang. But still, I would just so much rather avoid them. Because they don't drop anything, which is getting me killed. A lot. Not the bats specifically, but... I guess my impatience. Like, if these things would occasionally drop a rupee, I would, t I would totally feel better about clearing the room. Like, like if one out of every, you know, if, if one out of every group of uh, gargoyles dropped a rupee, that would be enough. Like, especially dying and repeating, repeating the dungeons. Like, it would add up. Not, I mean, it wouldn't give me 250, but it would be, you know, an incremental improvement. Enough of an incremental improvement to, to justify the time. And without, without that, I just really don't feel like the need to kill any of them. And to me, that, that's the main thing that makes Zelda not an RPG. Like, some people like to call the Zelda games RPG, but they're not. Well, except for Zelda 2. That one might be the only RPG in the series? 
I mean, it's definitely the only one that gives ex experience points. But the point is, every enemy... Well, not every enemy, but... Uh, I forget how the, how the experience system works, but... Like, every enemy... Drops... You know, has a chance of dropping experience, which means nothing is a waste of time. Oh... Okay, they're dropping stuff because I can kill them in one hit now because I have the better sword. It's probably the same type of slime. It just looks darker because... Uh... Because of the dungeon background. And... Going back to what I was saying, in an, in an RPG, every fight gives you some sort of incremental progress. Which, for an action RPG, can be a great motivator for... Repeated, repeated encounters. Um, but here, like, it's just tedious. Like, it's just a waste of time to kill those gargo gargoyles. So I try to save time by not fighting them, which means going around them, which means having to dodge, which means getting hit. I think this is a better way to get to the boss. Because when I went the top route, I walked into a room and immediately got hit by um, these. Yeah. Oh wait, I don't even have to have to go in this room. Okay. Well, I have one and a half heart, which means I'm definitely not killing this dragon. But maybe I can learn its patterns a little better or something. I don't know. Like. I definitely think I should focus on the head when it uh, when it detaches. Focus on the head and dodging fireballs. I think I was trying to get hits in on the on the dragon itself, and that's not a good idea. Sorry, give me just a sec. Okay, sorry about that. Just had to respond to a message. Um. Oh, I forget what I was saying. Yeah. Focus on the head. I don't know why I even brought out, brought out the boomerang. It's not going to do anything, right? No. So, uh, these blocks do not protect me from, from the fireballs. Nor does my big shield. Alright, so the fireball pattern is kind of predictable. It only spits one at a time, and, and it's a fairly regular rhythm. Not a completely regular rhythm. Uh, also, I forget if it does half a heart or damage or a full heart. Probably a full heart. Ah, uh, yes. Do I want to go to a fairy, fairy lake? I think I do. Alright, south, south, west, west, north, north. Once I can start buying potions, hopefully, this won't be as much of a, a regular thing. Oh, and I should kill stuff on my way there. Because these actually drop stuff. Sometimes just hearts. Do the Zolas drop good stuff? I don't think I've seen... ...a good drop from it yet. But every rupee helps. West, west, north... No, I think west one more time, and then north. Almost at a hundo. Oh 
Should I buy bombs? I don't think so. Because if I bomb that dragon, then I'm potentially going to have to deal with multiple flying heads at the same time. I think I'm, I'm going to try to get to it with full health. And that would make... I mean, that, that would make hitting it way easier. And it would make me more survivable. And now I know not to go through the uh, the spike trap room because I can go through the eye instead. That'll that'll save me a hit. And then I don't have to kill any of these enemies except for the the gargoyles right before the boss, right? Oh no. That's always the worst enemy in any game that they're in. Except for Splunky, where they're adorable and not super bad. And if I had the magic sword, I could kill the gargoyles in one hit. And then they would drop stuff too. would be so cool. Oh, I didn't get hit there. I only got stunned. I, I thought the gargoyle hit me too. Must have had some iframes. Speaking of iframes, let's walk into the snake's iframe. Am I right? Alright, well, I have more health, which should hopefully be enough. I really wish I still had my... Uh, my sword beam. My sword laser. My lightsaber. Well, I guess this is really more of a... Uh... Like a broadsword than a saber. Or maybe a short sword. Alright. I guess it doesn't take me that much time to go back to the fairy lake. So if I have to do it again, I'll do it. Such good sound effects. Like, this thing really sounds like it's in pain. And it sounds like it's angry when it screams at me. Okay, focus on the head. I guess this thing only has two heads. Oh, it can still shoot fireballs at me. Am I am I hitting it? wasn't flashing. Yeah, I'm hitting it. it. It makes a sound. What points does this thing have? Hmm. So when the head's flying around, the body doesn't seem to spit fire at me. I should make a hard save. 16. Is that... That's how many times I've died, right? That's probably not good. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Well... Okay, this doesn't set me back too far. Yeah, I, I forgot that I would get sent back to the starting square. But it is not super far away. I mean, if I have to die and continue enough times, eventually I'm going to have enough for the uh, the ring. And then everything will be good and I will never die. That saves me a trip to the fairy lake. That's nice. Mm. Mm. Come on. Yeah, 
Ah, screw it. Alright, level 4. I was just thinking that I should have some sort of death counter, and I forgot that the game does it for me. 16 deaths. Four deaths per dungeon. Not that I've died four times in, in every dungeon. But, uh... That is my... My rate of death. My KDR. Unless that number means something else. I don't know what else it could mean. I guess ultimately, the thing that I was complaining about with the first is Zelda is one of my gripes with a lot of games in the series. That so many of the, of the encounters just feel unnecessary. And for people who aren't into dodging around and like speedrunning and that kind of thing, that's cool. But like... Like, I don't like having to kill a bunch of unnecessary en enemies just to make sure that I, I can get through this room without taking damage, you know? Like, it feels like a, a bad piece of time. And, I mean, if I were better at dodging, then I might be more okay with it. <sighs> I don't have any items that can help. Maybe, maybe I can hit the head with an arrow when it's flying around. That might be a thing. Okay, I'm, I want to say maybe the head is unkillable, because the sound effect that it made is the same sound effect as... Like, it, it didn't make the, the tink, but it's not the pain- it's not the same as the pain sound effect. Okay. Oh man, I should have just done that to begin with. Oh well. One eleven. One one one. The lucky ones, as they call them. Alright, well, I think that will about do it for this video. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I'm having fun with this game, even if I have complaints about it. Like I said, it's still one of the best NES games. It, you know, I have mad respect for this game. I'm enjoying it, I'm having fun, and I, I, think, I'll, I think I'll be able to finish it. Uh, the back half of the game might present some challenges, but I don't think they're insurmountable challenges. Um, I mean, I, I'm not frustrated. Like, I don't feel uh, like I'm not anywhere close to my limit, so we'll see how this how this goes. Uh, not expecting to finish it in one more video. Um, I'm expecting dungeons five through nine. I keep thinking I'm, I'm at the halfway point for some reason, but I th there is a ninth ninth dungeon, so I'm just below just before the halfway point, but. I think I can see this through to the end. Thanks for watching. Bye.